Christ. Today in our country is a day called Memorial Day. Uh, it's a very special day. The scripture that was read by Randy, and I appreciate it, was John 15, 13. Greater love hath no man than what I'm fixing to tell you. That a man lay down his life for his friends. You know, this is the verse that comes with many, many sermons on Memorial Day. This verse is often quoted word for word on Memorial Day. It's always applied to the men and women that have died for our protection. I think of all the people that have gone across the ocean. I think of all the people that in our military that died right here in training. I think of all the borough boys and girls now in blue that try to keep us safe here in our own homeland. They served this country. They served us. We take either one of those away, we probably would not be here in an open forum studying God's Word together and worshiping God together. They owe our honor. These people died so the entire nation of the United States could have freedom to live the good life that we enjoy every day. The problem with a child, if you get everything he wants, you continue to do that, it finally has no appreciation and becomes spoiled. It expects it. Well, think nothing of it. You can't buy a gift too big or too great. Too expensive. Just not good enough. The United States of America somewhat has become spoiled. <clears throat> we enjoy the freedoms that we got, but we don't really pay any attention to thanking God for the freedoms we got. We don't realize that God and His providence has afforded us a life that we can enjoy the freedoms that we've always enjoyed. If we, uh, we could have easily been born in another country, a country of one of the isms behind it, and had a very suffering life, uh, we probably would have never been able to come together even with this many people and uh, study the, the Word of God without putting our lives in pure jeopardy, our families in jeopardy. We owe a lot to these people. And see, all these blessings surpass the awareness or appreciation of this nation. Today, the great, wonderful, precious nation that God has given us, and most of, of us have been raised in, is being tossed aside. God is being moved out of the picture. You know, we would not have what we've got if we hadn't had all those precious heroes. Memorial is a day, Memorial Day is a day to remember. All the ones that have fallen, wartime, peacetime, walking up and down the streets, some of those people put the uniform on to protect us. Some of them made it. But the ones that didn't is where we spend most of our thoughts today. Memorial Day. And we need to look at these people and think, God, that He allowed us to have the freedom to come together this morning and study His Word without fear of molestation or anything or anybody coming through that door and taking us away. This day in our culture comes around once a year. And to most, to most of America today, this day signifies the beginning of the summer season and the associated recreational activities that will go on tomorrow. <clears throat> what will you do on Memorial Day? Some will have a backyard cookout. I think we're supposed to do that. Some will go to the lake or the beach. Some will go to the park for a picnic. I'm sure we have some that will go fishing. <laughs> Others will attend a parade or some other Memorial Day celebration. <clears throat> All kinds of things will happen 
this time of year because everybody's off, <clears throat> or most people are. So many, though, will celebrate today. Honestly, Memorial Day. Without any knowledge at all of what it really means. What we just before mentioned. It's just a day off. It's time to have fun. Time to play. They don't know why we're celebrating or honoring this day especially, but they honor the day off. There'll be no special significance or even an, an awareness of the precious souls in the policeman's uniform or the military uniform that lost their lives. These people will never see the blessed years or even the blessed days that we're enjoying right now. I've been so blessed. I've seen my children grow up, my grandchildren grow up. Not all of them, but some of them. I've seen some of my great-grandchildren already halfway grown. I am blessed. <clears throat> so many people that were just like me and you didn't. They just didn't. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't get to enjoy every day, much less every decade upon decade upon decade that we have. It is celebrated somewhat as a day of ignoring the real reason of today and the time. To have fun without the thought of freedom. We're just going to have fun today. How many people have honestly asked you, Mama, what does Memorial Day really represent? And lots of times the mom and daddy don't even know. It's a sad thing. The knowledge of the sacrifices of lives, those that have walked the streets, they don't run from danger, they run towards it, whether it be the firefighter, whether it be the police, the law enforcement officers, whether it be those soldiers within our country, but those on foreign lands as well. We don't know them. We don't have any connection to them. And it seems that their sacrifice of lives just don't matter. The bloodshed that was spilling from their bodies, <clears throat> the tears from their eyes as they were dying, and the tears from the eyes of all their loved ones, their parents, their siblings, their children, their spouses, their friends, and in some cases, their spiritual family, the church, shed many tears. I know from first experience that a mother would shed her tears over that for the rest of her life. And she may wonder from time to time, why doesn't everybody else remember? Why does everybody else seem to take my loved one's life for granted? Hmm. They fail. They left loved ones behind. But out of pure ignorance, caused for the lack of teaching in our country today, and some do get taught the truth about all these things, probably would have to be a history major to really know. Then just the lack of appreciation sets in. Again, it's just a holiday. History never needs to be hidden. It needs to be understood in the only way you can understand it. About these wars that have been fought and why and how precious freedom really is. There were sacrifices made and they need to be taught. They need to be exposed. The ones that fell on hand grenades to save others, oh, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous unless it was your son or your daughter that did that. The ultimate sacrifice to save their friends. Those that led the charge, follow me, and died. Those that suffered immense pain. And some that didn't die that wished they had because of the pain they live in every day. May all be forgotten because it's not even being taught or really discussed 
today. Why did these heroes do these things? Because they love their country, they love their family, they love their friends, and they meant to put their life on the line for the freedom that we enjoy today. But our eternal destiny, our eternal destiny, not our lives on this earth, does not depend on us doing any one particular thing for America's Memorial Day. If you don't want to have a picnic, don't have one. If you don't want to enjoy yourself with uh, get-togethers, you don't have to. It doesn't matter. You might do it privately. But this morning, we're, all going, to we're going to discuss another Memorial Day that is much more su significant to every person on God's green earth, even though they're not even Americans, but every nation should be celebrating Memorial Day today and not tomorrow. <clears throat> we celebrate every first day of the week a Memorial Day. Memorial Day commemorates one who didn't only give his life for his friends, but he gave his life for his enemies. And I used to be one. Romans 5, 7 and 8. For scarcely for a righteous man, someone that's really good, will somebody die. Yet perhaps a good man, some, someone would even dare to die for. And I would say it would be hard to find today to find many people that would actually give their life to save somebody else. But if you think that's hard, God demonstrates His own love towards us. And that while we were His enemies, we were sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. How hard would it be for me to give my life for a, a good friend? I might do that. I definitely would my family. But for an enemy? Hmm. I don't want to lie to you. I don't know if I would or not. Jesus Christ did. Doubt, fear, disbelief, the unwillingness to believe in something, the inability to believe that something is the case, <coughs> uncertainty, agnosticism, the view that the existence of God and all His deities is unknown, unknowable, unprovable, so I reject it. It's on the minds of a lot of people in this whole world today, maybe even half of our country. Let's look at the bottom line. This someone, this, this, this someone cannot look at the heavens. If they don't believe in God, they don't believe in Jesus, they cannot go out right now and look at the skies, the clouds, the sun peeping through, the rain when it comes down, they cannot look at the stars tonight, the moon and the sun, and be in pure awe about the power of God Almighty, the Creator. He created all this through His Son, Jesus Christ. Hebrews 1 and 2. They don't believe it. They're skeptics. What they can believe is that two atoms collided one day and all this just happened. And with many, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. We just got life. And that's all we care about is today. Not where it came from, not about tomorrow, because in their opinion, you're going to turn to dirt. It's over anyway. All kinds of things. Psalms 19.1 The handiwork of God. You can look at all that and not believe in God. If you can look at all that and not believe in Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of all the prophecy, I feel sorry for you. Some people honestly think, and I, I had a guy that I knew one time that honestly thought that Martians came here and created this human race. And I'm sure there's a lot, millions probably, that believe the same thing. Let me make sure that you understand I don't think I do. Hmm. Today, there are so many that do not even know and do not want to know about Jesus Christ. That's corny. That's old school. That, that is something that 
We need to develop and really become what we are today, a secular humanist. They, know, they don't know about Jesus Christ who was sent by God to give an opportunity for each one of us to be saved. <clears throat> saved from what? From hell, eternal punishment. And to have eternal life. John 3.16 For God so loved you and I, the world, that He gave His only begotten Son. <clears throat> How many people gave their only Son in war or in uniform and they're still shedding tears? God gave His only begotten Son that anybody that believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Why didn't you say would not? <clears throat> because you can't just believe and stop there. You've got to do things. He tells you what to do in the New Testament. But there's so many that are ignorant of that, they've never been taught it. And it needs to sadden us all because their soul is as precious to God. Remember the enemies? Their soul is as precious to God as the most righteous person you've ever seen on earth. God created all of us to abide by the Word of God, obey it, and go to heaven. That's what He wants us to do. <clears throat> I wonder if He sheds a tear every time. This Memorial Day is not to remember those who have fallen in battle, but the one who was triumphed, that triumphed over death. There's never been a soldier, an officer, or a fireman, or anyone else that has died for the cause and then been resurrected. But there's one for the spiritual cause that has Jesus Christ. And what joy it needs to feel in our heart. Colossians 2.15 He disarmed the principalities of powers. He beat the devil. He beat Satan himself. He made a public spectacle of it. Triumph over, triumphing over them in His resurrection. We have a very special person to give honor to today. Jesus Christ. This Memorial Day doesn't begin a single season of the year but it begins every week of the year. Acts 20 and verse 7. Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. What does that mean? It means on the first day of the week they came together to break bread. Why? We'll talk about that. 1 Corinthians 11, 18 through 26 says, when we come together as a church, which we've done, we're warned to remember His body and blood that was given for us. And you know, right after the sermon and a song and a prayer, we're going to do just that. We're going to gather together as God's children. We're going to bow our heads and we're going to partake of the table. I don't know how special that is. Well, we only do that once a year. Now on the first day of the week when the disciples is taken for granted, anybody that studies the Bible that you're going to do this on the first day of the week. Which week? You want to gamble on that with your soul in eternity? I'm going to do it on the first day of the week. I've noticed nobody has a problem in passing the plate for communion on the first day of the week. First Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. I know we have to do that. Put the money. But for some reason on the first day of the week, Remembering Jesus Christ's death, burial, resurrected, His blood, His body is not important to us. Really? Well, we do it once a year. What if we pass the offering plate once a year? <clears throat> the Memorial Day is observed by those who are faithful Christians upon the first day of the week. And that's every week. The Memorial Day to so many means this Memorial Day, what we're talking about, don't mean nothing. Having been never, having never been taught, they don't even know what we're talking about, about the 39 lashes laid on the innocent Jesus Christ's back. Tearing the skin off. He had the power to stop it and wouldn't because He loves me and you. They don't know nothing about the crown of thorns. Can you imagine that? Just 
twisting it on somebody's head and the blood spurt. You know, the head bleeds like crazy. They don't even know about it. And if they did, who cares? In their minds, it's probably a fable, a tale anyway. The stripping of his dignity, the blasphemy, the words hurting his feelings. There he was, hurt. You know, when I'm hurt, I want help. I want some sympathy. I'm sure he did too. He got none. He got none. And instead, they were cursing him. Making fun of him. The mockery. They don't know about the three nails. I want to I wanna find somebody today that allow me to put one foot on top of the other and I want to drive a nail right through the top of his foot and see if he ever forgets that for the rest of his life. What if he did it to save my soul? Should I remember him? Well, I might once a year. I think I'm going to do what God says on the first day of the week. Otherwise, I think it's a sin because the Bible teaches me that if I don't obey the commandments of God, it is. Spitting on Him. That'd just be the insult of insults. The blood running from His body. The excruciating pain. Sort of like the soldier talked about. All the things he went through. Who cares? What's today about? Today's about cooking barbecue. No honor, no respect, no appreciation. And what about Jesus on the cross? Same thing. But most of all, probably the forsaking and complete loneliness. Do you know that God, Jehovah, our Father and His, had to forsake His Son and turn His head that day and let all that happen to His beloved Son? Why? Look for anything He did. The soldier that died on the battlefield didn't, kill, didn't get killed because he wanted to run out there and get killed. They all had their reasons and Jesus Christ had His reason and God had His reason. Laying on the shoulders of Jesus Christ that day was all my sin and all yours. And He wasn't going to get down. He wanted to give us the possibility, the opportunity to be able to obey His Word, have our sins washed away in baptism, and one day, once we've been baptized, which is only the beginning, not the end, walk in Christ all of our life, obey, repent of our sins constantly, worship Him in spirit and in truth, and go to heaven. And we don't even in this country seem to care. Uh, what is this day of which I speak? It is Sunday, the first day of the week. Mark 16, verse 2 and verse 9. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And when He rose early on the first day of the week He appeared first to Mary Magdalene out of whom he had cast seven demons on the first day of the week. We don't have a problem leaving that, do we? No, I, I, I think it was on Wednesday. I, I think it was on Sunday. It was on the first day of the week. Well, I know. But this thing about uh, we're supposed to do this on the first day, I'm going I'm to take issue with that. It is commanded that we would honor and remember this most special Memorial Day in Acts chapter 20, verse 7, today, the first day of the week. On the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul ready to depart the next day. Spoke to them and continued to live the message until midnight. And I know all of you might be pleased if I were to tell you that I really am going to preach to midnight. And I don't want to see anybody get it. You know, I'm kidding. But we wouldn't have a problem knowing if I said that, that that was the truth. This verse takes for granted that we're going to remember this on the first day of the week. When they came together. Is that so much for God to ask me personally every Sunday? The, the agony that I have to sit there and bow my head and pray 
while the bread comes by that represents His body. And then the fruit of the vine that comes by that represents His blood that was all given and shed for me. Is it too much to ask every week? I hope not. You know, today, our country doesn't honor Christ we don't even honor the national anthem anymore by standing up and saluting it. Most people that we see on TV now take a knee. <clears throat> First Corinthians 11, 23 through 24. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he was betrayed by his own apostle. He was, he was denied knowing him by Peter three different times. But that night, he was betrayed and took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which was broken for each one of you. For each one of you, God loves you. I want you to do this in remembrance of me. When we gather around the table shortly, I know where my mind and heart needs to be, and I know where yours does too, and I'm sure it will. 1 Corinthians 11, 25 and 26, in the same manner, he also took the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it. For as many of you as eat the bread and drink this cup, you tell the world, you proclaim Jesus Christ to the world till He comes. And I want to tell everybody, don't you? It is our given command to tell the world. We've got to tell everybody about the Savior and honor Him this Memorial Day. Let us do so with all the integrity He so richly deserves. The only reason I guess some of us love Him is because He definitely first loved us. 1 John 4, 19. We'll all do it in remembrance of you, the Son of God, Jesus. You know, it's a pretty simple sermon. I hope that I can pull some of your heartstrings. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. I know we do. And lean not on your own understanding. <clears throat> it's not what I think. It's not what I feel. It's not what I've been taught or tradition. It's the Word of God. In all your ways acknowledge Him with understanding, and He shall direct your paths. If you're not a child of God and you've never been baptized into the body of Christ, then when you have understanding of the Scriptures, I wouldn't put it off. If you are a Christian and you're in the battle, you're in a battle of your life with Satan, I hope you put on the armor. And if you took it off and fell away, it would be a good day to make it right with God. If it's in a public way, come forward let us know. You straighten it out with Him. Please take advantage of this time. If you have a need, come forward as we stand and as we sing. There's a thousand